Greetings, this is Dr. Sandra Cabot. Welcome to my third and final video on high blood pressure. These videos are very helpful for people with difficult to control high blood pressure and provide you with a holistic approach to overcome the causes of high blood pressure. They will also help you to reduce the risk of potentially dangerous complications of high blood pressure such as strokes, heart attacks and heart failure. In this video we will explore the best diet and natural supplements to lower high blood pressure and make your blood vessels healthy again. This approach is scientific because it treats the causes of essential hypertension such as insulin resistance, hardened narrowed blood vessels and fatty liver. Natural therapies and dietary modification can be used alongside prescribed drugs for blood pressure or by themselves for mildly elevated blood pressure and it is good to discuss this with your own doctor. Natural therapies can help your medications to work much better. Persistently high blood pressure is a common problem and is known as hypertension. Even if the blood pressure is only moderately elevated over the years, it can cause huge damage and should not be accepted. The metabolic problem called insulin resistance can cause high blood pressure. This causes insulin levels to rise too high and may result in fatty liver as well as fluid retention and high blood pressure. A low carbohydrate diet has been shown to reduce insulin resistance and assist weight loss. Substantial and sustained improvements in blood pressure, weight and cholesterol levels have been proven to result from a carbohydrate restricted diet. That doesn't mean you're going to be hungry because you'll be eating plenty of protein and healthy fat. A general guide to a low carbohydrate diet is the inclusion of regular protein from meat, seafood, poultry, eggs, cheese, nuts and fresh vegetables. And this will reduce insulin levels which in turn will reduce high blood pressure. Vegetarians will have to rely on eating more eggs, plain yogurt, cheese, nuts, seeds and legumes. For an easy and very effective low carbohydrate eating plan, see my book titled I Can't Lose Weight and I Don't Know Why. It contains an excellent eating plan effective for people with fatty liver, high blood glucose, insulin resistance, abdominal weight excess, high cholesterol and cravings for carbohydrates. By following this eating plan, one can lose weight, lower cholesterol, reduce blood pressure and prevent type 2 diabetes. The good news is a low carb diet with plenty of protein and healthy natural fats will not leave you feeling hungry and will reduce cravings for high carb foods. Excess sugar will raise blood pressure far more than excess salt. Many people with high blood pressure are told incorrectly to avoid salt, which is sodium chloride. However, your body needs salt, and low blood sodium levels can leave you tired and dizzy. Besides, a low salt diet tastes terrible, so don't suffer unnecessarily. If you have normal kidney function, you will not need to avoid salt. Now let's look at foods at lower blood pressure. Foods high in nitrates are excellent because nitrates open up or dilate arteries and create more room for blood to move through them. Your body can convert nitrates into nitric oxide which opens arteries and improves blood flow and lowers blood pressure. Vegetables high in nitrates include beetroot, green leafy vegetables, fennel, rocket, radishes, Chinese cabbage and parsley. Beet 
or as we call in Australia, beetroot, is fantastic for lowering blood pressure. You can grate it into salads, roast it, or juice it. Other foods that you should be eating to lower your blood pressure are citrus and pineapple, garlic and onions, which contain a sulfur compound called allicin that relaxes blood vessels, pomegranates, which are high in nitrates, avocados are fabulous because they're very high in vitamin E, which softens arteries, oily fish such as salmon, sardines, trout, herring and mackerel boost omega-3 essential fatty acids, which lower blood pressure. Apple cider vinegar, great stuff, has a cleansing effect on the liver, gut and blood vessels and will lower blood pressure as well as improve digestion. Take one tablespoon in the middle of meals. Don't take it on an empty stomach. Many people make that mistake and get digestive discomfort. Let's talk about potassium, which is a mineral essential to control blood pressure. An adequate intake of potassium is 3,400 to 4,000 milligrams per day for healthy adult males and 2,600 to 3,000 milligrams per day for healthy adult females. Many people don't get enough potassium and this can raise blood pressure. Foods high in potassium include bananas, citrus, cantaloupe, apricot, spinach and other leafy greens, broccoli, potatoes, mushrooms, peas, cucumbers and pumpkins. Don't you just love a good roasted pumpkin? Especially a Kent pumpkin is delicious. Also high in beta carotene and vitamin A is very important for healthy blood vessels. Many people with hypertension take diuretic drugs to lower their blood pressure and reduce fluid retention. Diuretic drugs can deplete the body of minerals such as magnesium and potassium and this can cause palpitations, dizziness and muscle weakness. You may want to talk to your doctor about using natural diuretic foods and herbs instead. They often work very well. Natural diuretic foods include lemons, celery and celery seeds, parsley, garlic and onions, bell peppers, watermelon and cucumbers, ginger, coffee, that's good, and black and green tea, dandelion tea and coffee, horsetail and hibiscus, and caraway seeds. Now let's look at the natural therapies that can reduce high blood pressure and can be taken in cases of mild blood pressure or with medications to help them work better. Magnesium, so important, has been shown to lower blood pressure and improve peripheral circulation. Magnesium relaxes the smooth muscle in artery walls and this is highly beneficial as it opens up the arteries. This lowers blood pressure and also increases blood flow to vital organs. Magnesium does not interact with blood pressure lowering drugs. Magnesium can reduce spasm of the coronary arteries in the heart. For this reason, it has a protective effect against sudden heart attacks. Magnesium balances the electrical activity of the nerves that supply the heart muscle and this reduces the risk of fatal heart arrhythmias. Note, magnesium works much better if it is taken alone as a pure magnesium supplement away from supplements containing calcium. If calcium is taken at the same time as magnesium, it will fight against the blood pressure lowering effect of magnesium. Magnesium can be taken in tablet form or an ultra potent powder form. It should be taken twice daily to help those with high blood pressure. Doses range from 200 to 600 milligrams of elemental magnesium daily. The evening dose also helps to promote a restful sleep and reduce anxiety. Magnesium really can be a miracle 
as it also prevents muscle cramps, facial twitching and greatly reduces migraine headaches. Migraine sufferers have a higher risk of strokes, so I always advise them to take magnesium every day. Another supplement that can help those with high blood pressure is essential fatty acids or EFAs. They help to lower blood pressure, balance cholesterol levels, reduce inflammation in the arteries and reduce blood clots. Good sources of essential fatty acids include oily fish and fish oil. Other healthy fats are found in raw nuts, avocados and cold pressed olive oil. Coconut oil is healthy to use for cooking because even though it contains saturated fats, they are very stable and do not oxidise. Coconut will not elevate cholesterol levels. Processed vegetable oils are not healthy. They are bad for the arteries and increase inflammation. Avoid deep fried foods and processed vegetable and processed seed oils and avoid hydrogenated oils. Let's look at another supplement that can be beneficial for high blood pressure. It's called taurine. It's an amino acid. A double blind clinical trial showed that the amino acid taurine, when supplemented, results in a substantial reduction in blood pressure in prehypertensive individuals. Daily taurine supplementation promotes an additional decrease in blood pressure beyond that achieved with conventional lifestyle changes and medications. Taurine is a component of the formulation called magnesium ultrapotent powder and helps to relax blood vessel walls. Taurine is also found in meat, eggs, seafood and dairy products. Let's talk about vitamin K, which can be very useful for people with hardened arteries. Vitamin K softens arteries and can reduce the progression of atherosclerosis of the arteries. Atherosclerosis can lead to high blood pressure, heart attacks and strokes. Atherosclerosis means hardening and narrowing of the arteries. Vitamin K2 plays an important role in activating proteins that keep calcium where it belongs, namely in the bones and out of the arteries where it can cause hardening and stiffness. Research has shown that people with higher intakes of vitamin K2 have a 57% reduction in the risk of dying from cardiovascular disease. Patients taking a combination of the fat soluble vitamins, vitamin K2 and vitamin D3 show a reduction in their carotid artery calcification score. In the bones, vitamin K2 activates a specific protein called osteocalcin. When osteocalcin is activated by vitamin K2, it binds calcium tightly to the bone minerals to create strong bones. In the arteries, vitamin K2 activates a protein called matrix GLA. When matrix GLA protein is activated by vitamin K2, it prevents calcium from being deposited in the arteries. Not getting enough vitamin K2 to activate these two proteins results in an increased risk of osteoporosis and atherosclerosis. Numerous studies have shown that populations with higher daily vitamin K2 intake namely more than 32 micrograms, have a 50% reduction in the risk of death from cardiovascular disease. The average diet lacks vitamin K2, which is found primarily in organ meats, the fat on meat, egg yolks, parmesan and pecorino and blue cheese, and in a Japanese staple dish of fermented soybean called natto. Supplementing with vitamin K2 is beneficial for everyone desiring both healthy bones and a healthy cardiovascular system. The liver doctor brand of vitamin K contains three different forms of vitamin K. 
as phytodione MK4 and MK7 in a dose of 2,200 micrograms per capsule along with 2,000 international units of vitamin D. Note, you cannot take vitamin K supplements if you are on the blood thinning drug warfarin. Now let's look at another interesting supplement that some people find very helpful called serapeptase. It is also known as serotiopeptidase and is an enzyme isolated from bacteria found in silkworms. The enzyme enables silkworms to eat their way free of their cocoon. Serapeptase has been used as a supplement for many years in Japan and Europe for reducing inflammation. Serapeptase is known to dissolve blood clots and atherosclerotic plaques in arteries by breaking down fibrin and other dead or damaged tissue. Serapeptase can remove deposits of fatty substances, cholesterol and cellular waste inside the arteries. The fibrinolytic property of serapeptase may also help with the problems of thick blood, risk of stroke and thromboplebitis, which are blood clots in the superficial veins. Doses of serapeptase vary from 1 to 2 capsules twice daily, 30 minutes before food. Serapeptase inhibits inflammation and oxidative stress in the endothelium, which lines the arteries. Researchers concluded that serapeptase can modulate vascular inflammation in a beneficial way. Further studies will be required to explore the detailed mechanisms of its cardioprotective effects. Caution. Check with your own doctor before taking serapeptase if you are taking blood thinning medications. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is beneficial for strengthening the collagen in blood vessel walls, thus making the blood vessels less fragile and less prone to rupture. This reduces the risk of heart attacks and strokes. You can supplement it with 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams daily, but it's also important to get vitamin C from foods, especially from citrus fruits such as oranges, grapefruit, lime, lemons and mandarins. I highly recommend that you eat citrus fruits daily. I make a delicious vitamin C boost juice from pineapple, orange, lime and lemon. Peel off the skin of the fruit but with the citrus, leave a layer of white pith on the fruit. Then pass the fruit through the juicer. You'll get a creamy, delicious juice. The white pith is very high in bioflavonoids, which will protect your blood vessels. During my lectures, I often ask the audience, hands up those who take vitamin C or juice citrus every day. Guess what? It's usually only 10% of the audience. Most folks do not get enough vitamin C and this can have serious consequences for your blood vessels. People who do not get enough vitamin C may not have scurvy, but they will have weakened blood vessels that are more prone to rupture. This could result in a stroke or other serious cardiovascular event. Vitamin C not only strengthens the blood vessel walls, it also reduces inflammation in the blood vessels which reduces all types of cardiovascular disease. So as you can see, there's some very useful, effective, powerful supplements to make your blood vessels healthier and to reduce high blood pressure. If you have high blood pressure, it is vital to stay monitored by your own doctor. As you can see from my videos, there's so much you can do yourself to bring your blood pressure down into the healthy range. High blood pressure often has no symptoms, so people tend to put up with it or live with it. High blood pressure is dangerous, so please don't ignore it. And if you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe and share it with your friends. And if you have any questions, we love to hear from you. Email us at liverdoctor.com and thanks for listening.